So are you folks from Southport? I am now. You are now. There you go. You got here as quickly as you could. I did. Right? Well, that, that's the same for myself because I was born up in uh, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania in 1898. And I came to Southport as a traveling salesman. I was in that, that was in the early 1920s. And I was selling produce. Produce, yeah. Because my, my family, we moved from, you know, up in, uh, you know anything about Pennsylvania, anybody? Northeastern Pennsylvania, yeah. Well, you're going you're gonna to learn a little bit then, okay? Because Northeastern Pennsylvania is anthracite coal country. And Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania is right in the middle of that. Now, anthracite coal is, is what they call hard coal. Right? And it burns burns very, very, very pure. It's not all, all smoky like that soft, soft coal. But the trick is, you have to go hundreds if not thousands of feet down under the ground to mine the anthracite coal. Right. So my, my father came to America in uh, 1890. And his, his name was, was Mika Jatskoslavich. And he came from an uh, area of Poland that was right on the boundary, boundary with, with Russia. And uh, my my mother came about eight years uh, eight years later or so, or so and uh, her her name was uh, uh, her last name was Andrzejewski. So they were my fa father was a was a coal coal miner, but in his home he was a farmer. And so in his in his heart he wanted to be a farmer. He didn't want to be down under the under the ground mining, mining coal. So they found, one of their friends made, uh, uh, told them about Mr. Hal McRae. Anybody from Wilmington? Uh, Hal McRae, the McRae family is very, very well known family in, in Wilmington. And uh, Mr. McRae was uh, selling, we, we all call them farmettes, 10 acre, 10 acre farms and they had a house, house on them. And, uh, this was in uh, St. Helena, North Carolina, which is just just a few miles from Burgo, from Burgo, and uh, Burgo is about 20 or 30 miles from from here. So the family moved, well, my family moved from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, to Burgo, St. Helena, North North Carol Carolina. Um, right after they 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 moved, my my father passed away. Uh, I believe he died of black lung disease, and that was something the coal miners uh, caught being under that underground and uh, not having good uh, good ven ventilation. But in Burgos, uh, the family did did quite well. A produce farm uh, paid two hundred and ninety dollars for that ten acres and the house that was on the on the on the acreage. We put a uh, I think it was a hundred dollars down and then you paid you paid the balance over over three years and so they did they did, did well and then world war one came along and I, I i joined i was a the marines and i was a corporal in the marine corps and i served on the uh, uss charleston and we did convoy duty uh, and then after after the war had uh, fighting had had ceased we took occupation troops to over to France and, and brought the combat veterans back back home. Um, you know that was the war. I called that the, the war to end end all all wars. Um, of course, it, it didn't do do that, did it? Um, so when I came to to Southport, I was selling produce for the McRae family, and. Um, Southport had some of the prettiest girls I'd ever seen seen before, and and one of them, uh, Louise Stanland, caught my my eye and and my heart, and we, we got married. Now uh, we had a we had a, a good a good marriage, and uh, the only the only disappointment is we did not have any any children, but we helped raise our uh, our niece. Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn's mother had passed away when uh, when Gwendolyn was just one year one year old. 
and uh, her mother's, her, Gwendolyn's mother's first name was Al, Alnita. Well, Alnita and Louise were, were sisters. Um, I a, a, a nice story, Gwendolyn, when she got, when she got married and she had her, her first child, she named, named that young, young girl Alnita after her after her, her mother, of course, a mother that she had really had no memories, no memories of. So, um, but we started uh, a grocery store here in, in Southport, and I worked on that. We did pretty, pretty good, because by 19, 1926 or so, uh, 26, 27, I, I served a term as mayor of, of, of South, Southport. And that, that took a lot, a lot of time, so that time was, was the way I wasn't working at the, at the store. But we were, doing, we were doing fine. So I was mayor for a couple of years, and then I was, uh, I was county commissioner. I was actually chairman of the Brunswick County Commissioners in the early 1930s. And then in 1935, Franklin Delano Roosevelt appointed me the postmaster here in South, Southport. And I was the postmaster from 1935 to 1945. All right, now let's think a minute. What happened in the around 1935? That was the Great Depression, right? So then you get to the 1940s, you're in World War II. Well, I'm the only federal employee, as the post, postmaster, I'm the only federal employee within miles of this location. So when the government wanted to, wanted to start some kind of program, whether, whether it be bonds or whether it be rationing, it went through the, the the postmaster, and so I was quite busy. Now, over here, see the stone there. It says Erickson. Well, that was a fellow named by the name of John Erickson. Now he was a he was a, an immigrant from from Norway. At the same time I was postmaster, John Erickson was the mayor. So we worked we worked very very closely closely together. We were good good friends, and it's it's nice to have John close close by. And even uh, Sonny Dozier, that young man over there, Sonny, Sonny Dozier, he was the keeper of the Cape Fear Lighthouse over on, on Baldhead. I knew him well too, and he was, he was, good. He was a good fellow. So, as uh, first mayor of, of Southport and then, then the postmaster, I got to, to know a lot, a lot of people. The other thing I want, I want to mention, did I, did I mention that I was the best fisherman? <laughs> no. I was. I, I was by far the best fisherman in this part of the of the county. That, that's true. Now, I'll, I'll grant you this. Now, Erickson, we, he was the captain of a of a Menhaden boat, of a pogey pogey boat. So when he brought when that boat came in, that catch was a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand fish. Now I'm not talking about that kind of fishing. I'm talking about <laughs> fishing. You got to go out and you know you got to work at it a little a little bit, right? But I was the, I was the best best, best fisherman. Um, not, you know, not bragging. Just, just um, so, you know, <clears throat> I want to step back a little bit. I got a little bit ahead of myself. I, I, you know, I wanted to tell you tell you a little bit about um, how happy I was always was and my family was to be here in in North Carolina as uh, a. Uh, Russian immigrant, Polish Im immigrant, uh, on both sides of my, my mother was Polish, my father was, was Russian. I was a, that was a hard hard time to come to the United United States. Uh, you know, uh, they called us hunkies. Well, hunky means someone from Hungary, but they didn't know. They all you know they didn't know. They just they just threw us all. All, all together, and they, they didn't think um, we were good enough to be American citizens. In fact, the head of, of U.S. immigration of that time, I think it was about 1923, he actually actually said that the immigrants coming in now, and I'm meaning the immigrants from <clears throat> from Southern and Eastern Europe, are not of the same quality as the as the earlier immigrants who came from Northern and Western 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 Europe. Um, and that they were ruining the culture of of America. Of America. So it was it was a was a tough time, and it was very uh, 
we loved it down, down here in the Carolinas. Not, not that the, the folks in, themselves in, in Pennsylvania were, were nasty. It was the, some of the, the officials, they, they didn't want, you know, they wanted you to work those coal mines, but heaven forbid that you, you buy a house. Well, how can you have, how can you buy a, a buy a house? You know, so it was a, there was a lot of, lot of, lot of prejudice in that. So it was very, um, very, a very good move for, for my family. Um, I did a, I did a lot of, um, did I tell you I was the best fisherman? So I did a lot of fishing, right? <laughs> but I did a lot of um, uh, volunteer peer work. So in, in, in addition to being a mayor and a county commissioner and the post, postmaster, I was uh, involved in many activities. But the activity that I most, uh, I'm, I'm proudest of is I was the chairman of the, what is now the J. Arthur Dozier Memorial Hospital. I was chairman of the, of the board, of the Board of Trust and Trustees. And at that, that time, and this was in the late 1930s, we took that hospital from being a county facility to being a, a hospital here in South, Southport. And a lot of that had to do with uh, the physician, uh, J. Arthur, Arthur Dozier that the hospital is now now named after and uh, is, is still an important part of, of life in in Southport. So to me that was probably the most most important thing I did and I I hope you I hope you all appreciate it. Now that you're here. <laughs> we did. We did. <laughs> any any questions you might want to ask about that time in, in Southport or what kind of fish did you catch and eat? Catch? Well, you know, you're going to get all smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, you know. Okay. You know, you go out in the, you go out in the swamps, you know, and people say, oh, I can't go out in the swamp. There's an alligator out there. There's an alligator. There's a stretch in the water. There's no, no, no problem. You want, to, you want to catch a good fish. But I also tell you, I was, I was a great baseball player. <laughs> Did I forget to mention that? <laughs> They're still talking about me be up there in Wilkes-Barre, how good a baseball player I was. And my wife and I, we took a we took a one month break, kind of that was 1929. We took our Essex automobile and we went from here to Southport up to Wilkes-Barre. So my wife Louise could meet could meet all all of her all her relatives, all my my relatives. And Louise was just absolutely shocked because I had more relatives up in Wilkes-Barre than there were people here in South Southport at that, at that time. So, boy, we had a we had a good time on that on that, that trip. How long did it take to drive from here to Wilkesburg? Long time. <laughs> <laughs> and a flat tire or two or three or four. Yeah. <laughs> that was quite that was quite a quite a trip. What was the population of Southport? Early 1900s. Um, what would we guesstimate guesstimate here about? About a, a thousand, um, about sixty percent white, forty percent black. Maybe, maybe a little higher than a, than a thousand. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Go down there and see Sunny.